So this is interesting. TPM, so Trusted Platform Module, has come out as being a little bit more uh, nuanced than we initially said in our preview and then in our event coverage. So technically, TPM 1.2 will work for DIY systems. So that's good because that means we'll be able to go quite a bit farther back than we thought. But OEM systems must have 2.0. TPM 2.0 modules have apparently already begun being scalped online. The prices are skyrocketing. This is from Shen Yi. Price history of this thing is going from around uh, to note bucks. though, if if you do the health check on your computer and it's, it's like, oh, you don't have this. In a lot of cases, you just have to go turn it on in your uh, in your UEFI BIOS. Yes. So Intel Skylake, AMD Zen, and newer have it built in via Intel's PTT and AMD's FTPM. But it's disabled by default, so you just have to make sure that you enable it. However, there's some other things to consider here. It's unclear what Windows is doing with the TPM. So if you swap your motherboard or CPU, does that equal broken Windows install? Yes. We don't know. Yeah, that's... Uh... Yeah, that's a that's definitely an uncomfortable part of this whole thing for sure. Early reports also say that you can force install without a TPM, so maybe it's not that big of a deal. I did see some people saying you can just take a Windows 10 installer and just copy all the Windows 11 different files onto it and then just install it and it'll install Windows 11. I'm not sure if that gets around the TPM requirement, but it's pretty clear that Microsoft feels that a TPM is going to be necessary going forward and that this is going to be a big pain in the butt for everyone from DIYers at home all the way up to professional sysadmins that are managing fleets of devices. That's, I mean, uh, yeah, that's going to be a massive nightmare. Like, for that. One yeah. really horrible thing already is just like if you're using legacy boot mode for whatever reason, maybe your system just was like being a butthead at some point about UEFI mode. Um, guess what? Full reinstall time, no ifs, ands, or buts, because you cannot use legacy boot mode with TPM enabled, period. <sighs> That's pretty brutal. Yeah. Yeah, do not like it. Do not like it. Yeah, the, the wallpaper sync with Microsoft account not uh, uh, being cut is just, like, weird. I don't really care. It's just, like... Why? Yeah, I don't know. I, honestly, I don't even like it. I kind of hate that feature. In fact, right now, my desktop has a wallpaper that just it got because I got a new laptop and it has this Asus ROG whatever wallpaper on it. And then my desktop doesn't have Windows oh. activated, so I can't change it. Well, I can change it. I'm just lazy. Mm -hmm. You just right click a thing and set as desktop background. But you can't use I, the personalization yeah, I, menu, so I didn't. I uh, uh, have my Windows activated across the board, so... I uh, I have different backgrounds for all my systems. So like I, I agree. I'm just I just don't really understand why they cut it. You know. Um, I don't know. But uh, maybe just no one just, cared, or didn't. Maybe it, people just didn't like it. And that's the thing. Like if you're all sad that it's gone, just like email yourself the picture and then set it as background again. Like it's really not a big deal. It's not exactly difficult to work around. There's actually a couple super chats here that are sort of Windows 11 related. Nightmaster85 says, do you think in the future Microsoft will want to make Windows fully cloud-based? So instead of buying a powerful machine, consumers just buy extremely cheap hardware that uses 100% cloud. So it's like Chromebook on steroids. Um, Microsoft is definitely headed that direction, or they're, they're definitely headed closer, but I don't know if they will actually go there. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to defend that statement and point out that xCloud, right? xCloud for Xbox is pretty much Microsoft moving in that direction. Okay, yeah, it's only the Xbox right now, but like an Xbox is just a computer. And okay, the Xbox and doesn't... And Microsoft is pretty over their whole like don't cannibalize each other thing. So, yeah. So we actually had this discussion internally where we kind of went, you know, at what point... Does Microsoft just admit that the Xbox is a computer and just let you install Chrome browser on it and Adobe Premiere and whatever? At what point does Microsoft just become overnight 
a tier one system integrator with an enormous install base and this huge ecosystem advantage over anybody else in the space. I don't know. Nothing really prevents it. I mean, one of the things that is different architecturally about an Xbox compared to a typical PC is that the Xbox uses its uh, uses the same memory pool for both the CPU and the GPU because the CPU and GPU are integrated. But it's been demonstrated already in that Chinese console. I'm afraid the name escapes me right now. But there's a Chinese console that was using a very similar architecture with GDDR something whatever uh, that was connected directly to an APU-like CPU. And Windows was running on it, so clearly it's capable of it. Um, I don't know, man. Guess we'll see. Guess we'll see.